Another industry hit hard, the airlines, of course, with travel plans halted or canceled. Tens of thousands of airline employees are facing furloughs. We will talk live to Sarah Nelson, president of the Flight Attendants Association, in just a moment. But first, more on the state of flying. Coronavirus cases that devastated the airline industry have soared this summer, flattening hopes of a rebound in travel. As demand for flights has plummeted down about 75% since last year, the International Air Transport Association predicts we won't see a full recovery until 2024. And on the front lines in the sky, airlines employees are navigating new sanitizing and safety measures. I go out and um, I try and think that everything is quote unquote normal, um, but there's always that little fear in my mind um, that I might get infected. Now, flight attendants already worried about keeping themselves safe in the air, fear they'll be grounded for good. I think you would be naive to not be worried about layoffs come the fall. I would be foolish to not be worried. Facing catastrophic losses, some international and regional carriers have already filed for bankruptcy and tens of thousands of employees may be impacted. American Airlines warning it could lay off or furlough 25,000 employees with as many as 36,000 at risk from United. And even after 20% of Delta's employees left earlier this month, there may be more cuts to come. Behind the scenes, airline executives and unions are pushing lawmakers to extend the bailout, hoping to save jobs. But a decision from Congress is still up in the air. Joining us now is Sarah Nelson, International President of the Association of Flight Attendants, CWA. Sarah, good morning to you. Good morning, Chanel. Nice to see you. Uh, let's uh, dig in here by talking, uh, start by talking about jobs here. Nearly all aviation jobs, some 2.1 million positions uh, were spared thanks to the payroll support program uh, that was part of the CARES Act. But that plan ended at the end of July and Congress has already left for recess without a new deal in sight. So what's the goal now? Well, first, I want to just take us back really quickly because flight attendants have seen crisis before. After 9-11, we lost 100,000 jobs uh, overnight. We had bankruptcies after 9-11, and we lost pay. We lost our pensions. We lost. We di had diminished health care. Our careers were changed forever. And so we really advocated for a package this time that would be workers first. What it does is it requires the airlines to keep everyone on the job, the money can only go to the payroll, our health care, our retirement, and it requires a cut to stock buybacks, a ban on stock buybacks and dividends, and a cap on executive compensation. And that has kept us in place, and that is through September 30th. But as airlines plan, they have to start to announce right now what flights they're going to have, what the airline is going to look like on October 1st, and that's why we're in jeopardy right now. Well, on that note, I understand warn notices were sent out to airline workers letting them know that they might be furloughed come October. How many workers received those warn notices and what is the union trying to do to minimize the impact? So well over 100,000 work, 100, workers have received those warn notices. Mm. And we, um, what we know is that after 9-11, there were other industries that were still operating. So flight attendants went out and worked in restaurants. They worked in retail. They worked in uh, real estate. Uh, they worked as EMTs. They had other places to go. Right now, we're in the middle of this crisis. And one in, uh, for every one job there is, five Americans are looking for a job right now. This relief package that Congress mm was working on was going to give money for states and locals. That's 5.3 million jobs that we're not going to have in transportation, sanitation, teachers, other services we count on. The $600 plus up is supporting another 5 million jobs. So instead of supporting people on unemployment, we're going to add to it. There is going to be a tsunami of job loss this mm. fall and it's going to be something that we can't recover from and that is just not it's not an option for us um you know we know so crisis many, as flight attendants yeah go ahead there's so many there's so many layers to this i want to shift uh, quickly to air travel for a moment in july uh sure. it was down about 75 percent uh from last year uh, but the tsa recently announced that passenger numbers were the highest they've seen since march that is a bit of good news do you think this uptick perhaps could last throughout 2020 
Well, let's be really clear. We're talking about returning to just 25% of what it was before, and we're not really oh. seeing a rebound oh. from that. And we are not even through the event of this crisis. So as we've tried to put mask policies in place and had better cleaning on the planes and tried to restore confidence to the flying public, we've also been uh, really battled by the administration saying masks are not necessary. And what that is doing is keeping people staying at home. So there are people who have have to travel right now, and that's what you're seeing in the 25%. That's typically emergency travel or people who are moving actually to help fight the virus. We are an essential service. We need to keep those essential services going. The payroll support program also requires the airline to keep service to all of our small communities so they're not cut off. But all of that is in jeopardy. And, you know, we do know crisis, and we also know that people are saying, well, this is what has always happened. You know, Congress has left and they do nothing. When you say they do nothing, you're giving them permission to do nothing. And that's not OK. Mitch McConnell said yesterday they can come back within 24 hours notice. The House passed a bill 90 days ago to get this done. And what we know is that on 9-11, my friends on flight 175, a Boston-based flight attendant, I knew all of them on flight 175. They didn't know what they were facing that day. What we were told for years and years, if, if, if there's a hijacking, you're supposed to appease those hijackers. You're supposed to try to calm them and calm everyone on the plane. It was the exact wrong instruction for us that day. But we got some of the first intelligence to our country that day. They helped get the word to flight 93. And in a moment's time, on Flight 93, my friends and crew, black Americans, white Americans, Asian Americans, a pregnant woman, a gay rugby player who was fighting for marriage equality, Democrats, Republicans, and independents were on that plane. But in a moment, they were just Americans. And they came together to fight for their own lives, but for sure to fight for ours. That flight was headed for the Capitol, and they saved us. They saved our country from ruin. They saved the lawmakers. They saved our democracy. And now what we need to do is have these lawmakers understand that that is what Americans do. We are in the middle of a crisis, and we need Mitch McConnell to come to the table with Nancy Pelosi and get a deal right now and show Americans who we are. Sarah Nelson, I think everyone listening right now can feel your passion. So we'll certainly uh, continue to follow up on this issue. It's certainly a major challenge. Thank you for your time this morning. Thank you.